The House of Representatives Committee on Constitution Review says a total of 305 memoranda and 112 bills were submitted to it. This, this comes as there are ongoing efforts by the committee to amend the 1999 Constitution. Senate President Godzilla Pabi had earlier assured all of the readiness of the 10th National Assembly to produce a constitution capable of meeting the collective needs of Nigerians. Akbabio charged federal lawmakers of both chambers to be diligent in the ongoing review of the Constitution, stressing that every bill and proposal must receive the needed consideration. For a conversation of, on this, we now have the Deputy Spokesman of the House of Representatives, Philip Agbese, in our studio. He'll be talking to us on the deliberations of the joint three-day workshop with the leadership of the Nigerian Judiciary, speakers of the 36 state Houses of Assembly, and top legal experts. Thank you so much for joining us on Newsday. Oh, it's a pleasure. So can you tell us, you know, what the outcomes of your deliberations were and how it relates to amending the 1999 Constitution? Yes, um, what we did basically uh, a few days back here in Lagos, um, first and foremost, I want to say that uh, Nigeria is blessed to have uh, His Excellency, the Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Right Honorable Benjamin Kalu, you know, to be spearheading this um, committee as a chairman of the Tenth Assembly's uh, Constitutional Review Committee. Uh, he has come on board with some innovations, you know, to help us get it right this time. You recall that uh, in time past, the National Assembly had made quite a good number of efforts, you know, in trying to cause uh, some amendments to the Constitution. So what we have done at this point in time is to identify some very critical thematic areas that uh, Nigerians, you know, are yearning for changes, you know, to our constitution as regards to good governance. And then having identified those areas, we have equally identified critical stakeholders across various segments, you know, to interface with people who are very critical to not just the amendment of the constitution, but to the working of a constitution after it has passed through amendment. And we identified the Nigerian judiciary. So the committee, in its wisdom, invited, you know, leaderships of the various uh, segment of the judiciary. Uh, we invited justices from the Supreme Court, from the appeal, from the Court of Appeal, uh, from the Federal High Court, and even the State High Court. And we had other stakeholders, non-judicial officers like magistrates, uh, lawyers, friends of the various courts, you know, to guide us, you know, to speak into the issues. And uh, again, we thought it wise to equally carry along uh, the state houses of assembly. Because what used to happen in the past is that the National Assembly will cause some amendments to the Constitution. And when you take it back to the state house of assembly, you know, it is just a new process for them. In some instances, they lack understanding of the areas where amendments are being proposed. And some cases, they equally have areas that they feel, you know, should be amendment. So what happens is that uh, when you take it to the State of Assembly, at that point, you have to return it back to the National Assembly. And at this point, before you know, the, the, the lifespan of that assembly is over. So what we have done under the leadership of uh, Right Honorable Benjamin Kalu at the moment is to identify um, not just the thematic areas, but... Uh, some sort of uh, timelines, you know, what we should achieve uh, at every point in time and how to measure the milestones with what we have achieved. So at this point, is the, we, we, we received a memorandum from people, from Nigerians. We equally considered members' bills, you know, sponsored by members of the parliament, either in the Senate or in the House of Representatives. And uh, we equally received memorandum from members of the public on areas there also consider that amendments are necessary to the Constitution. So at this point, we are now relating with stakeholders, reason why we had that meeting here a few days back. We have not, the meeting did not agree, you know, on any specific area, on the thematic issues. What we are doing basically is for everybody, the state legislators, the judiciary, and members of the amendment committee to have a detailed understanding of the various proposals. A good example, uh, the Supreme Court just recently passed a judgment between the federal government and the 36 states of the Federation on the issue of local government autonomy. Uh, uh, at the course of our interaction, the justices of the appeal court and the Supreme Court, 
they equally, you know, made proposals as to the amendments that will work. You know, because of the kind of constitution we have in the country at the moment, the question of uh, accusations that the judiciary, you know, is being used or the judiciary is not doing their own best is always there because you have a constitution that has duplication, you know, of rules mm -hmm. uh, and even to a large extent some contradictions. So a judge can base his interpretation, you know, on a certain provision of the law and um, a plaintiff or a defendant is crying that uh, another aspect of that constitution is not looked at. So the judges have pointed out some of these areas where there are repetitions in the constitution, in the current constitution. They've equally pointed out the areas where we also have some sort of contradictions. So at the end of the day, we believe that when we are done, uh, it will also be very easy for the court to easily interpret instead of necessarily because uh, as lawyers, we're also taught that ju judges can go into the mindset of the framers of the law you know, when interpreting the law. Well, it seems that uh, the three days, there will be more days to review this, and it seems like it was very uh, fruitful. But you were talking about the contradictions and the repetitions within the Constitution and the uh, confusion that creates. But without getting into detail, because you also said you weren't going to do that, what, um, what are some of the uh, changes that have been made? What are some of the critical thematic areas that are being worked upon, if you can expound on that a little bit more. Um, and in terms of the lack of understanding of some of the, uh, the members, how is that being dealt with? Okay, uh, we looked at uh, state creation. Virtually every, every group in this country, every ethnic group is complaining. People are talking about state creation. They believe that uh, at, at the time, the, the last time the states were created, there were some very uh, strong ethnic groups or groups were actually not carried along. A good example is the question of the Southeast. Uh, the Southeast have been crying, talking about marginalization. That is the only region with less than six states as far as this country is concerned. Uh, we are being guided by that. Another very important uh, area is the issue of uh, state police. You know. Um, if we are going to adopt state police, of course the constitution has to be amended. And even the, the question of local government autonomy that we, the Supreme Court just did with some days back, there's also a need you know, for us to address some of the issues that uh, people have submitted as memorandum. The Nigerians are talking about if uh, indeed the local government must be you know, independent, then there's also uh, every need for the Independent National Electoral Commission to be saddled with the responsibility of conducting local government election. Some people are equally arguing that local government election should be conducted you know, uniformly with state house of assembly election, governorship election, uh, house of rep election, the senate and the presidential election, all within a period of time to allow Nigerians to express you know, uh, their opinion and views the same way they do during other elections. Because today we don't have a unified calendar for local government elections in Nigeria. Whereas Jigawa is uh, preparing for election, you will hear that uh, Kano just had its own primary, uh, local government election, Adama will be preparing, uh, Baesa just finished, and so on and so forth. So those are some of the contradictions. So we, we, we have been briefed you know, by Nigerians who submitted memorandum to say, yes, we want to look at a unified calendar for local government election. Uh, we equally discuss even the autonomy for the judiciary, funding for the judiciary, and uh, one important and critical aspect, you know, that some of the people who came around equally discussed is the, is the distinction between, you know, a magistrate being a judicial officer or not. Uh, according to the presentations made to us, uh, mem uh, Nigerian magistrates, you know, are treated both as judicial officers and as uh, non-judicial officers, when it comes to issue of discipline, uh, punishment, when the, the way they conduct their businesses, but not in terms of remuneration. Mm -hmm. When it comes to funding for magistrates, they are not treated as, ju as judicial officers. So they brought this uh, issue up, I think, uh, under the Association of Nigerian Magistrates. We're looking at it. Uh, the experts that were also invited, senior constitutional lawyers across the country, they also came. What we are trying to do basically is to amend the constitution and not create further problems. 
If you look at the 2022 Electoral Act, you know, where the issue of electronic voting was stated. Sometimes when these issues are taken before the court, after elections are held, you will hear that there are errors in the Electoral Act. So what we want to do is to cure this problem, you know, once and for all, to deal with the elephant in the room, you know, for the last time. And we also want a constitution that will be fl as flexible as possible. We don't want a bulky document that must state, you know, how everything is done, but to give to Nigerians a constitution that is able to strengthen our institutions. We believe that once the institutions are strengthened, you know, they will be able to carry out their functions and responsibilities to the extent that they help to shape, you know, good governance. Now, talking about, you know, dealing with the elephant in the room once and for all, some critics believe that, you know, this constitution amendment has become a four-year ritual. I mean, like every government that comes into power or, you know, whenever they renew their tenure, mm. they always seek to amend the constitution. And most times they really do not plug the loopholes. Mm. So they believe what Nigeria needs is an entirely new constitution and not the some piecemeal adjustments that we've been doing. What are your thoughts on that? Mm, I, I will not disagree with people who feel that way. Because as a matter of fact, uh, before now I used to think in that direction as well, uh, coupled with the fact that uh, in the last... Uh, 25 years, as citizens of this great nation, we haven't really felt anything, you know, to really believe that government has been working. Again, uh, it is uh, a work in progress. It's a gradual process. Even if we are going to end, uh, adopt an entirely new constitution, is the document going to come from our leaders in the church? Is it going to come from the market women? Somebody somewhere, you know, using this because any attempt to suspend the current constitution is going to be a call for anarchy. So what that means is that we, today as a country, we have a working document. The working document, we have all agreed that it is not a perfect document. There's no perfect constitution anywhere in the world. But we strongly in this parliament believe that, yes, we can have a better document that will not only unite us as a people, but a document that will also, you know, give a sense of nationhood to our citizens. Because people need to believe in the guiding principle, which one of such is the constitution. So we, for Nigerians to own the constitution, that is why we are embarking on extensive engagement with the Nigerian people. Uh, His Excellency uh, Senate President Apabio mentioned when the committee was inaugurated, and I think uh, I listened to it when you also did a track up, you know, when he said that every proposal you know, must be looked into in its own merit. If you look at the composition of the Committee for Constitutional Amendment in the National Assembly, I don't know what it used to be in the past, but today in the House of Representatives, every state, you know, the state caucuses made nominations. That is to say that the 36 states of the Federation at the moment is represented in the committee. So with that, it means that the various agitations from the various states, you know, they have a champion from the state, you know, who in the first instance was elected by the Nigerian people you know, to represent them at the National Assembly. So you go to the table to now. Then we have other interest group. You know, for instance, all the women in the parliament have been co-opted into the Constitutional Review Committee. Uh, so that the issue of gender, uh, the issue of uh, women representation in government, in parliament, in the executive arm of government, and other areas that women believe that they've been shortchanged. This large number of women coming to be part of this committee, they will be able to look at these issues to address them by themselves. And that's why, again, as a committee, we have gone further to engage. You know, for instance, one of the thematic areas we're looking at is rules for the traditional rulers. Like His Excellency the Right Honorable Taj Din Abbas has always put it, this is the people's parliament. We are here for the people, and whatever we must agree upon as a parliament must have the input of the Nigerian people. So it must come from Nigerians, because we want a constitution that Nigerians will be proud to say, this is our constitution. We all contributed to it. I believe that it was the absence of this kind of engagement in 1999 that led us to where we are today. So if, uh, by God's grace, we now have Nigerians, not just um, the leading you know, groups that we used to know, but going outside that, engaging, you know, involving people, receiving recommendations. We've received, you know, memoranda and we are still receiving, you know, from people to say, yes, this area, uh, we feel strongly that there must be an amendment. So we look at it and we don't just look at it as a parliament. We bring in experts because these laws must be operated. 
So when suggestions come in and you turn them into laws that you are not able to operate them, we will still remain you know, in that stagnant point where we used to be. So we want a constitution that from operation. And beautifully, I must add, why we brought the issue of timeline? That was what I was going to ask next. Yes, why we, brought, why, we brought, why we brought the issue of timeline? Because for Nigerians not to think that we are embarking on the annual World Cup uh, seasonal ritual mm -hmm. yes. with a constitutional amendment, all right, we were looking at timelines to be able to assess what we are doing, measure progress at every point in time, equally to be able to achieve the set goals and objectives. We, by our timeline, we want to conclude the process by December 2025. Okay. December 2025, you have another two years into the lifespan of the 10th House of Representatives. This will give us enough time to be able to take it to the states. And that we're already doing, because by engaging the speakers of the State House of Assembly, they're now coming with inputs from their own state parliament. And we are considering all these inputs together. So when this document gets back to the State House of Assembly, it doesn't look strange to them. They've equally seen their own input in the document that is coming to them as amendments to the Constitution. So it will be very easy for them to own it. Because in time past, we've had these issues where State House of Assembly would decline assent to very critical aspect of the alteration. For example, uh, State House of Assembly autonomy. You won't blame them. Because we, we are in, in a country where everyone seems to be suspecting the next person. So even when something is good for you and it is not proposed by you, that mutual suspicion will set in. Now why should John be in a hurry to offer you mango when you have not asked for mango? So what happens, the state of our assembly will not decline assent to it. But what we, we, we are doing in the 10th House of Representatives in National Assembly, uh, Constitutional Review under the leadership of Right Honorable Benjamin Kalu, is to get everyone involved from the beginning. The traditional rulers also have, very, have some critical roles to play you know, in the day-to-day -day running of this country. In time past when uh, these uh, leaders were highly respected, not the current situation that we have today. A governor wakes up in the morning, he has disposed a, a traditional ruler. We want to have constitutional you know, backing for them so that our governors will not wake up and begin to destroy this institution. First and foremost, there are institutions that have to do with our culture, our custom, our tradition as a people. So by bringing all these people together, for instance, when each time we talk about uh, fighting crime in Nigeria, there are traditional methods, okay, people have used in the past, you know, to fight crime. And these institutions are all being brought together to help us. So as a matter of fact, I think we are doing something very novel at the moment under the leadership of uh, Right Honorable Benjamin uh, Kalu. And by God's grace, we are not going to fail this country. For the sake of all of us and here in Nigeria, we hope that uh, the committee doesn't fail and the work uh, continues to be great. Great to have you in the studio with us today, Honorable Philip, uh, Philip Agbese, House of Representatives. Deputy Spokesman, good to have you in the studio. Thank you for coming. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much.